This is Twit. I titled this one Gone Daddy. Uh, last Friday, GoDaddy revealed a rather astonishing bit of news. Its network and organization had suffered a multi-year security compromise that had allowed attackers, attackers who to this remain to this day remain unidentified, to exfiltrate the company's source code, customer and employee login credentials, and install their own malware, which redirected customers' websites to malicious Aye. sites for years, years, yes. years. So, uh, you know. They're they're big, right? They have got nearly 21 million customers. They're the number they're, one registrar in the world. Their last year revenue was nearly four billion dollars. Um, so you know, many years ago, when I was making my move away from network solutions, I gave GoDaddy some consideration. Uh, it is the choice of a very techie friend of mine, whom we both know, Mark Thompson. Uh, maybe because he's in Arizona, and I think that's where they're based also. Uh -huh. But for me, it just looked too bubblegum and, com and yeah. commercial. I'm not you know? surprised so, to hear this. We, yeah. we buy our certs from them because their cert prices are so cheap for uh, the, for the you know, EV, EV certs. Right. But, I mean, that's a cert. That doesn't, you know, that's our security, not theirs. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, you know, what I want from my domain registrar is staid, stodgy, and stoic. Uh, I don't yes. want a domain registrar <laughs> that looks like romper room. Uh, and as I was as I was pu putting that in the show notes, I thought, I wonder how many of our listeners will relate to romper room. Oh, you know, I'm yeah. getting to. I think I'm beginning to date myself here a little bit. I see Stevie <laughs> and I see Lori. I used to know Miss Nancy, our local romper room lady, actually. So anyway, I you know I from a from a uh, registrar, I don't want entertainment and upselling. I just want something solid. Anyway, as we know, I chose Hover, and I've been very happy. And just to be clear, my choice was made years before Hover became a Twit sponsor. So it wasn't yeah. like you know yeah. it wasn't after the fact. So in a filing Thursday. Last Thursday with the SEC, you know, our U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, GoDaddy admitted that three serious security events, the first occurring three years ago in 2020, and the way they put it, you know, somehow lasting through 2022, were all carried out by the same intruder. Now, okay, that, but, but they're also saying, but we don't know who, but we know it's the same. So I'm like, what? Anyway, they wrote, Quote, based on our investigation, we believe these incidents are part of a multi-year campaign by a sophisticated threat actor group that, among other things, installed malware on our systems and obtained pieces of code relating to some services within GoDaddy, unquote. And they said that their investigation was still ongoing. The most recent event occurred last December, so just, you know, three months ago, when the threat actor gained access to the hosting servers GoDaddy's customers use to manage websites hosted by GoDaddy. They got into their cPanel hosting servers. The threat actor installed malware on the servers that, quote, intermittently redirected random customer websites to malicious sites. Because, you know, that's what you want from your registrar. GoDaddy was unaware of the presence of this malware and learned of it from their customers <laughs> who were complaining that visitors to their sites were occasionally being redirected elsewhere. So <laughs> GoDaddy said, we have evidence and law enforcement has confirmed that this incident was carried out by a sophisticated and organized group targeting hosting services like GoDaddy Go, they said, according to information we've received, their apparent goal is to infect websites and servers with malware for phishing campaigns, malware distribution, and other malicious activities. Now, okay, saying hosting services like GoDaddy, you know, that sort of begs the question whether other hosting services have been similarly affected. If so, you know, which ones and by whom? Those questions remain unanswered. It appears that the first of several intrusions took place in March of 2020 when so fully, you know, three years ago when a threat actor 
obtained login credentials that gave it access to employee accounts and the hosting accounts of uh, roughly 28,000 of GoDaddy's customers. Fortunately, those, ho those hosting login credentials that were obtained for the 28,000 customers did not also provide access to the customer's main GoDaddy account. Otherwise, <laughs> damage would have been more severe. That first breach was disclosed two months later in May of 2020 in a notification letter sent to the affected 28,000 customers. The company said on Thursday, it's responding, get this, responding to subpoenas related to that incident that the Federal Trade Commission issued in July 2020 and October 2021. So there doesn't seem to be any big hurry over in GoDaddy land to, <laughs> to do much of anything. Then GoDaddy discovered another incident in November of 2021. Two months after the threat actor obtained a password that gave access to source code for GoDaddy's managed WordPress service. So, beginning two months earlier in September of 2021, this unauthorized party used their access to obtain login credentials for WordPress admin accounts, FTP accounts, and email addresses for 2.1 million current and inactive, that is previous, managed WordPress customers at GoDaddy. And these were not the first of GoDaddy's many problems. Through the years, security lapses and vulnerabilities have led to a series of suspicious events involving large numbers of sites hosted by GoDaddy. For example, back in 2019, a misconfigured domain name server at GoDaddy allowed hackers to hijack dozens of websites owned by Expedia, Yelp, Mozilla, and others, and use them to publish a ransom note threatening to blow up buildings and schools. The DNS vulnerability, which was exploited by the hackers, had come to light three years earlier, yet GoDaddy never took any action to mitigate the risk. You know, again, this is, this is not the registrar you want. Also in 2019, a researcher uncovered a campaign that used hundreds of compromised GoDaddy customer accounts to create 15,000 websites that published spam promoting weight loss products and other goods promising miraculous results. So, okay, so, you know, pushing back from this a bit, you know, the one question I had was how it was that GoDaddy could assert through the, you know, these more recent three attacks spanning the same number of years, that they had been repeatedly plagued by a single threat actor, yet somehow have no idea who this individual or group is. So I did a bit more digging, and I found that in their 10K filing with the SEC, they stated that the most recent December 2022 incident is connected to the two other security events they suffered in March 2020 and November 2021. Okay, connected how? This reminded me of what we recently saw from LastPass, where we were told that the second attack, the one, remember, where all of our backed-up LastPass vaults were stolen, was enabled by the initial intrusion. Mm-hmm. That was worrisome since it suggested to us that LastPass had not fully cleaned up after the first intrusion. In the GoDaddy case, they appear to be stating that they know that it's the same threat actor because information presumably obtained during the initial intrusion three years ago back in ah. 2020 was subsequently used in both 2021 and 2022. Unfortunately, this suggests, as with LastPass, that post-intrusion cleanup may have been minimized. And, boy, given their track record and their apparent negligence based on the actions that we've seen, who would be surprised by that? But in any event, the cleanup was ineffective. A full post-intrusion cleanup means that nothing that an intruder could possibly have obtained 
remains valuable once the cleanup is concluded. We know that didn't happen in the case of LastPass, and that also appears to have been the case for GoDaddy. You know, as we've had occasion to note on this podcast, Leo and you and I have talked about it years ago. Once malware has had access to a system, you can never fully trust it again. And I should really remove the qualifier fully. You know, you cannot trust any system after it's been compromised because you just don't know what could have been done. You know, these days we have malware burrowing into our motherboard firmware to maintain persistence even across wipes and complete reinstallations. You know, so the only course of action then is to reflash the firmware, wipe the drives, rebuild from scratch, and change everyone's access credentials. You know, yes, this is a huge nightmare in the case of a large sprawling enterprise, but there's really no choice. After GoDaddy's initial 2020 breach, either something lingered in a system that was never found, you know, some latent advanced persistent threat presence, or they failed to rotate all of the keys and login credentials across the entire enterprise, something remained either malware tucked away in an unexamined corner or someone's credentials that were never changed. Thus, the same guys came back later for another dip and, and a year later for yet another one. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Certifications show more than proving a skill set. They let everyone see you are committed to keeping your knowledge and skills up to date. The products you've grown to love, IT Pro, Audit Pro, and Practice Labs are now training the modern workforce together. Be bold. Train smart. Check out go.acilearning.com slash twit to learn more. 